We're all born with different genetics. Some parts of our body are stronger than others. And then we enter the world, and nowadays it's a pretty toxic place. We have heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, aluminum. We have chemicals like pesticides and solvents and artificial colors and flavors. And these tend to accumulate in our genetic weak spots. What ends up happening is the toxins accumulate there and they drop the electrical potential of the cell, the voltage. Think of every cell like a small battery and when it's healthy, it's got a good electrical charge. The toxins end up lowering the charge on the cells. You see, with every bite of food we eat, we're eating the spores of bacteria and yeast and the eggs of parasites. We're not sterile and our environment isn't either. Now, normally this isn't a problem. These spores and eggs will pass through our body and move along. They're looking to compost. That's their job. They're composters. And as long as we're healthy, they won't see us as a food source. But what happens is, if our cell voltage is low enough, we look like a compost pile to them and they start breaking us down. That's not to say that there aren't aggressive pathogens out there. There are, but 99% of the infections that we get are chronic opportunists and we've given them the opportunity. What happens is they start growing. The eggs are stimulated to hatch. The spores are stimulated to open up and grow. In the case of parasites, it could range from the microscopic up to some worms that are several feet in length. When you combine the weak genetic tissue with low cell voltage, with heavy metals, chemical toxins, parasites, yeast, bacteria, and the biofilms they make, the body has a very difficult time dealing with this. It ends up becoming a kind of chronic wound. And eventually, the body decides to create scar tissue. A scar in this manner can be understood as a wound that's failed to heal properly. Here are two microscopic images of mouse muscle. The one on the left is from a young mouse, equivalent to a 20-year-old human. The one on the right is an older mouse, equivalent to an 80-year-old human. You can count 20 healthy muscle cells on the left, but on the right, only 10 muscle cells remain. The rest of the slide is dark. The dark area is the scar tissue that has accumulated over the mouse's lifespan. And of the 10 cells that remain, you can see that four of them have faded out. These are called senescent cells, that is, cells that are old, barely functioning, and on their way to becoming scar tissue. In order to rejuvenate this mouse, we would need to clear up the scar tissue and get the senescent cells to self-destruct. Now look at these two mice. They're the same age. The younger looking mouse was genetically engineered to have senescent cells self-destruct. So no senescent cells and no scar tissue either. That's why it looks so young. It's also unlikely that the younger looking mouse will ever develop cancer, since many cancers develop out of senescent cells and scar tissue. If we want to be able to age gracefully, we're going to need to find a way to trigger senescent cells to self-destruct and to remove scar tissue. If a person doesn't have any obvious genetic weaknesses, then scarring happens systemically and across the entire body as we age. But some of us have parts of our bodies that are weaker than others. When scarring shows up more aggressively in one place than another, this is what we recognize as symptoms. When it shows up across the whole body, it's aging. But in one place in particular, this is where the disease process starts being recognized. This can happen anywhere in the body. Scarring in the lungs is asthma, COPD, emphysema, or cystic fibrosis. Scarring in the breasts would be fibrocystic breasts, and in the uterus, fibroids. 
Scarring in the arteries would be arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. In the skin, scleroderma. In the muscles, fibromyalgia. It could really show up in any part of the body you could imagine. In men, it shows up as Peyron's disease, which is scarring of the penis. 23% of all men on autopsy have so much scarring in their sexual organ that it is actually twisting, and it's a source of a lot of erectile dysfunction in men. No organ is immune to this. It's estimated that 45% of deaths and most chronic diseases are associated with scarring. So, what can we do about it? Well, we need to dissolve the scars, then get rid of those opportunistic infections, then get rid of the metals and chemicals that cause them to see us as composting material. If we can do all that, then we can get our health back.